Blending with mineral spirits. Is there a point? Morning all, John here for a Wednesday. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to get straight into it, I'm going to blend four different types of mineral spirits into some oil pastel so you can see what it is. I'm going to do it with a cotton bud and I'm going to do four and then I'm going to do one with just a cotton bud, no mineral spirits. So you can see the difference. I'll tell you what each one is and then the last one will be just with the cotton bud. Okay, so we've got the pencil blend and we've got the low odour thinners. At this moment in time, I think I'm probably preferring the low odour thinners. I think it's probably broken it down a bit more. Um, and the thing that I've learned personally on this video is not to press too hard and to get enough pastel on there. Let's try a third one. This is low odour white spirit. I now don't really expect them to be all much different, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, apart from maybe the last one. So we've got a low odour spirit. Here's my cotton bud. I'll get some of that onto there. Maybe just dab a tiny bit off to start with and start with the orange. Not pressing hard. Very important that is not pressing hard. I'm needing a bit more of this. Again, I think I'm getting quite a nice blend. You'll feel it start to dry out and you just load up again. Okay, so actually another really nice blend going from red into orange which is probably what you'd get in real life if you were doing an, a, a, an object. Okay, well that's another plus then, isn't it? Right, the very last one I'm going to try is turpenoid. Now, I have found this not to be overly readily available in the UK. It is, but it's not readily available. Um, and this is turpenoid natural. Uh, which is that can there. I'm going to pour just a little bit. This will be a thicker consistency, a bit more like linseed oil. And I'll talk about linseed oil in a touch because that was my last experience with blending like this. So let's get a little bit on my cotton bud. It's a lot thicker and it's got a colour to it. So we'll see if that makes any difference to it. Uh, again, it's breaking it down really nice. Turpenoid is in fact a brush cleaner. To that extent, it breaks down all the paint. And that's giving me, um, I don't know if you can see it on, on camera, but it's actually giving me a really nice glow to the paint. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you and say, I was going to come on here and say, there's no point to this, this blending with mineral spirits, but I've actually now changed my mind. That's quite a turn up. The reason I was going to say that is because I used a, a stand oil, uh, a linseed oil alternative, and... I just ended up in a gloopy mess and it took ages to dry and I just wasn't getting on with it and the time before that I tried to do a very large sky now that did work out okay but it didn't work out as good as I'm doing these blends here we said that my favorite is probably the low odor thinners and my least favorite right now is probably uh, this one which was the low odor white spirit. It's very subtle, it has to be said. Turpenoid's quite good. Pencil blend's quite good. But the thinners, I think, is really good. Now let's have a look at blending with just a cotton bud. Now it feels a lot drier, obviously, and it feels a lot harder. 
to blend and it seems like it's going to take a lot longer. And that could make a difference in, in numerous types of way. So it's not filling in the paper, the tooth of the paper that is. It's quite a nice blend. But I think what I will do after I've blended this is to then go back over with the mineral spirits. I'll use the turpenoid just because it's out on the table. And to see what happens. Now you can see that that isn't as good. However, this is already dry and you can start working on it again right away. These you have to wait a certain amount to dry. They all feel fairly dry right now. And can I work over the top of them? Yes, I can. Would I? I think I'd probably let them dry a bit more uh, and see where we go with that. So let's just see what happens when I just put a little bit more red in. Yeah, you can keep going and keep adding. I think maybe you've just got to let it dry between layers and then add on top. But you must be aware that almost definitely the bottom layer is going to come back to life. What I'm going to do with this one now, um, I'm hoping you get some ideas with this, is I'm going to see if I can use the turpenoid to make that quicker and better. Because I've done it, I might as well go over with the turpenoid and see what happens. Yeah. So I've spread it over, I've blended it, I've got exactly what I want. Now I'm putting it turpenoid onto it and it's actually giving me, I'd say probably the best blend. So maybe, maybe it would be good to blend your pastel out and then just wet it with your mineral spirits, whatever mineral spirits it is you're using and then blend that in again. Now, as I said, and I keep saying, I never expected to come onto this camera and tell you that this was a good idea. So I've changed my mind as we're doing this, and it's opened all, up all sorts of possibilities for me now. I think what you do have to do is to be very light-handed, very conservative with your use of the spirits, and, uh, you know, just, just be careful. Just be careful and blend very light handed and gently. Okay, now yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm just gonna have a bit of a play with my finger there. Yeah, that's 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 actually rather good. I'm really impressed actually, if I'm being perfectly honest. But you can then go back over the top. Yeah. Get some lovely blends going on there. Some of these have that dry pastel on them, don't they? So I think, yes, that's probably a very good way to do things now. What I'm going to do now is just get a little bit of blue here, just for the contrast sake. Laid that very gently on. Um, it's quite a sticky pastel though, having said that. I'm going to get a little bit of this turpenoid that I've been using. I'm going to do exactly the same again. There's probably a little bit too much turpenoid on there. And blending it into the orange. See now, you can now see there's a little bit of transparency going on there. And that's because I've put too much turpenoid on. And maybe I should have blended these together once when they were dry to begin with. And then worry about putting the turpenoid on. Or putting them side by side instead of overlapping them. However, it does mean that with a little bit of manipulation, we're getting a subtle blend. We might actually turn over onto the drier side of the cotton bud just to spread the paint. You can see a defining line there. Go back onto the turpenoid side and manipulate it. There we go. So I think it's just a case of being very careful, very gentle, and taking your time to get what you want and trying not to go too far. 
All right, so I can just blend out my fingers and get this very subtle blend into the next colour. Now, I'm not going to tell you this is the best idea. And it's probably best just for underlayers. It's actually worked out better than I thought it would. And it does have its place. I think for large areas, possibly smaller tiny details, you could perhaps get a little bit of a blend going on like that. If you've, say, perhaps had a tiny little ball or something like that, that you want a tiny little blend into it, you could do it like that. Uh, rather than using the pastel itself because that will be too thick and it won't give you this little subtle gradient because there's just too much pastel there. So my thoughts on this. Initially I was going to say don't bother, waste of time. However I've slightly changed my mind during the course of this video. It does make pastels transparent, you have to be aware of that and especially if you use too much of the mineral spirits. The other thing is, I have to say, why make problems when they're not needed? So if you can get away with just using the oil pastel on its own, then do that. There's no point in making an extra problem for yourself. So they're kind of cons. Could cause a mess if you're using too much, it's got to dry too long and then you go to, on too early with the oil pastel again. It could cause a muddy mess for you and you're going to get frustrated. Uh, especially linseed oil is, is not good for that. My experience with linseed oil is terrible. My experience with these is actually slightly better, so that's good. It has to be said, there's a reason you don't see good oil pastelists or professional oil pastelists doing this much it's because it's not the best idea it's not a bad idea but it's not the best use it sparingly use it wisely it's best for large areas and finer details but that means using tiny bits of pastel in, in the small details if you were going to use it for a whole painting, just use it for underlayers, in my opinion. To do a whole picture like this, I think, would be quite frustrating, because I think you could do the underlayer, and then you're going to put layers on top, and you could be reactivating the top, uh, the bottom surface, sorry, and then getting into a bit of a mess. And the overall look of the picture, in my opinion, such as it is, would be... A very transparent looking picture, not full and wholesome like a normal oil pastel would be. There are alternatives to this. You could use a water soluble oil pastel. It's kind of going to be the same, maybe a bit more transparent. Uh, I haven't used a water soluble oil pastels a lot yet, but what I have used them for um, was just an underlayer. They, they become very transparent and I'm going to have a bit more practice with them and then I'll come back to you with them. I use them on a canvas as an underlayer for a boat picture just because it was quite a textured canvas and I felt I needed colour to fill in the canvas first. So I used the water soluble oil pastel but you could use the methods I've just tried. Another method, if you're not bothered about using mixed media, would be to perhaps use watercolour, acrylics, oil paints. Um, they'd all work differently. You want a thin, light layer underneath just to get rid of any colours so that white isn't showing through when you put pure oil pastel on. Then you can use watercolour. What's my conclusion from all this? It has its place. There are things you can do with it. You have to be quite wise in the use of it, um, otherwise you could end up causing yourself problems. My initial thoughts before I came and did these blends on here was to say don't bother. There's still an element of me saying that. I feel that, that you can just do an oil pastel straight off the bat. There's no need for all this messing about and as I said earlier, why cause yourself extra problems when they don't need to be caused? In utter conclusion, use them, use them wisely, 
don't bother if you don't have to. Why cause yourself problems? But they could be of use, especially in larger areas and tiny details, in my opinion. I hope this has helped. It's a very long subject that we could get into. So to keep this brief has been quite difficult. And uh, I've shown you what the blends will do. They were quite impressive, it has to be said, until I put the blue into the orange and red. Uh, and that was probably because I'd already blended it. So perhaps put all the dry pastel down first, then blend it. Okay? And then I think it'll probably work better rather than blending some of it and then adding more pastel. This is where I think it's probably best for underlayers and tiny details. Anyway, I hope that's of use and somewhere along the line something was picked up from that. And for another time, whomever, wherever you are, have a great day, great week and a great year and be very kind. Bye for now.